What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Metal Maniacs Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Ingersoll, and I'm here, as always, with my co-host. Hey, Jay, it's your boy, Mod. What's up, buddy? Hey, yo. What do so, we got today? <laughs> we have an interview today with Zion Bittenbender. All right. Dude's an awesome vocalist. He yes. vocals in a band called Cerebral Cortex. Correct. And he's also vocals in his own project called Beyond All Misery. Yes. So super cool young kid. Good, uh, good kid. Uh, man, super great talent he is. Charismatic. For how long he's been doing it. Yep. So we hope you guys really enjoy the interview and make sure you like, subscribe, all that stuff, and check out Zion. Much love. Thanks for coming on. For sure. Yeah. Thanks for making the time, man. We appreciate it. Uh, I'm Jay. You can see my name up there. Yeah. That's Nick. It's good, brother. What's up? Been following you on the socials, been keeping an eye on your work. I love the vocals, dude. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been uh I've been getting a lot of um a lot of good support, especially the past few weeks. So it's it all helps. So thank you. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh that's what we kind of want to do is highlight mostly, you know, the Michigan metal scene. That's what we're here to do. But also we're we represent extreme metal. That's something we've grew up on since you know the beginning you know we've started with our aussies metallicas stuff like that but you know yeah. now it takes a certain special individual to like the kind of music that we like and perform and stuff like that but uh nick yeah. had commented on one of your videos he had seen it and that's when i hit you up and i was like hey let's have this guy on the show because i would love to pick your brain and know more about you and your brand and everything like that so uh, yeah, I, I won't keep you terribly long today, but uh, we got some questions for you if you're down with that and uh, would love sure. to know more about you, man. So, yeah, as we get started, you want to just introduce who you are and, you know, give us a little bit of your backstory, man, how you got into doing what you do and, you know, kind of how it progressed into where you're at now. Yeah, um, I wasn't too much into um, like the heavier side of metal. And I kind of, I grew up on like Ozzy Osbourne and Black Sabbath and stuff. My older brother and my dad put me on that pretty heavily. And um, I think when I was about, um, I don't know, probably about 13, 14, I discovered um, like folk metal. There's this band, Krishan, who are pretty heavy but they do a lot of like bagpipes and flutes and all that kind of stuff in their music i just thought that was really cool to like merge the two genres and i had never heard that crazy of metal before so like bringing all that together was like really new and really like cool for me and i was like the weird kid in school so i kind of gravitated towards that kind of weird different stuff and um i so i went from that i started listening and then i found chelsea grin I found a lot of the, uh, you know, like signs of the swarm back when CJ was in it and stuff like that. And like, I started to like heavier music, but I didn't really, I wasn't too much into playing it because it was really hard to play. And I played drums at the time. I was a drummer first and um, I was, I got pretty good at the drums and um, I still play now once in a while, but um, I was discovering more and more heavy music and my friend at the time did vocals and he came over and we wanted to write like a little song together, whatever, me on the drums and whatever. Um, and he came over and the first time I heard those types of vocals in person was when I really like connected and was like, oh, I need to learn how to do that. So I heard it in person, like the the crazy noises and the, like it made me really want to try doing it myself. So I cracked down on it for a couple of weeks and I learned high screams first because Dickie Allen was my favorite um, vocalist at the time. And he I mean, he probably still is my favorite. And we man, it, it took a few weeks, but I learned how to do the classic tunnel throat <laughs> thing that he does and um it was very it was very cool to me that I could figure it out especially in a couple weeks I was like wow it's like I'm on to something so I I it took me a little bit longer to get the I have a higher voice and have a higher tone so it took me a little bit to get the lower gutturals and all that kind of stuff but like 
I just slowly progressed into heavier stuff. And by the time I was like, I don't know, uh, 16, 17, I was fully into like the metal scene and everything about it. I just really liked how different it was and how heavy and dark everything was. It was like my favorite. So. Yeah. yeah, Jay and I were a couple of social outcasts coming up in high school. And I think it was yeah. just a natural um, path for us to find that style of music that represented being a black sheep or having, you know, weird friends or just being weird. You know, we got, we got started in some pretty, pretty macabre music early on deicide carcass, morbid angel. We were into that stuff right off rip. And I mean, we were into stuff before that, but it was kind of like the common ground for us where we were like, let's start a band. Let's do this. Did we lose him? Oh, Oh. he's right there. No, I'm here. Blanked out for a second. Um, But yeah, I can relate. Uh, it took a while for us to to get to where we are now. It wasn't overnight. It was a it was a steady long path. Yeah. Um. So the vocal thing, it almost seems like you your brain just hears it and decides it's gonna do it because I had no idea I could do any screaming myself. I don't even know when or how that started. Because the first time I joined a band, I talked about being a vocalist, but I I didn't even know I could. I'm not classically trained. I'm not even trained at all. And yeah. just, so it th- that didn't really pan out. But then once I started playing and listening, my brain just automatically just kicked it right out. One day I started doing like the Jeff Walker from Carcass. Yeah. <laughs> and I was kind of surprised. And then I just started doing like more like the David Vincent from Morbid Angel, a little bit lower register. And then I had two tones and then we just kind of augment those from there. But yeah, I saw your, I don't know if it was a sponsored post that you did on instagram but i saw that and i tagged jay immediately and i was like jesus this guy's got some pipes and i don't i don't know how long you worked to get those lows but man you found them they're so so dirty low like uh, yeah i like, appreciate that thank like, you i can tell i can tell you put in the work you got a, you got a great setup and you got some really cool diverse vocals so we're, we became instant fans in, like immediately cool hey can you tell us a little bit about the name, your your particular name? So I have a question. So we'll, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, your projects as well. So the Cerebral Cortex, the very yeah. first EP, are you on that or not? The very first EP, I'm not. Okay, I that's told, what we thought. I joined the band like two years ago. Okay, right? cool. So the only music that is out currently that I'm on is the couple of singles that are on the whole album and and then that whole album so okay yeah yeah. the reason we ask is because it was labeled as jeff on the first release yeah and then he was the original vocalist yeah and then they had somebody else and then me so i think that the question that jay and i have for you is is zion bittenbender a stage name or is that your legal name on the IG? <laughs> that's a that's, pretty unique name yeah, yeah. cool that uh, is my that is my name i'm i'm german so that's where the bitten bender comes from and okay. then oh, my family yeah. my family was pretty religious um at the time and so zion's in the bible it's mount zion but yep. um i pronounce it zion like lion but with okay. a z okay but thank you um but that's yeah that's that's my real name <laughs> so. that's cool that's pretty badass dude yeah. <laughs> i don't even need a Thank stage you. name like that name <laughs> yeah i know like, we were both kind of like i wonder if he decided to change from like jeff to, to zion and just say this is my stage name i want to be known as this oh, personality yeah. identity so now that we've got that sorted out i said i think it's two different people just, either that or is like a testament to the growth and the change in the vocals because the, right while they're both fry and, and you know um what what's the term that you use um false chords so while yeah. both singers shared that i was like they're different they're different vocals end of day like from the newest release to the first one there's definitely a progression or a difference there so we got that sorted yeah. cool name <laughs> cool vocals <laughs> yeah so well, i guess we'll then we'll just focus on we'll talk a little bit about cerebral cortex first and I'd like to give you a little, just, you know, my feedback on it, because we, we always, if we have somebody on the show, we're going to study your catalog. We're going to study, you know, what you're about and everything. So we got a good idea of, you know, who we're talking to and then be able to discover and learn a a little bit more. So, so the band, your, your Kalamazoo based. 
Zion? No, the Tulum. I am, yes. Oh, I'm yeah, the only yeah. one in the band that lives in Kalamazoo. Okay, so. cool. Because I know the band is out of Toledo, right? Yep. Yep. And it looked like the band kind of started as maybe the guitar player's like kind of solo project or something because he was labeled as like doing almost all the instruments, I think, besides the vocals on the very first EP or something. And then it, and then it yeah. formed into a band, basically. Yeah, so he he's fought between a lot of members. The band is around for a, around... He's been working on the project itself and the band for for almost 10 years like he he's been really um he writes almost all, all the music and comes up with ideas he is a mastermind jeremy um the guy with the green guitar and any videos or pictures he he is the mastermind behind um and then all the lyrics for the album were already written by him before i joined um omission omission is the only song that i wrote the lyrics for okay um so that one means a little bit more to me than the other ones but the all the lyrics a lot of the ideas and then john the other the rhythm guitarist him and john kind of come up with the majority of the riffs and and the ideas for the songs and stuff um but as far as the lyrics go and most of the album jeremy is the master mastermind behind all that so yeah he it's it's been a long road for for that guy I, it he's definitely been working really hard to yeah. this is his dream for sure this band so yeah i noticed myself as i was looking from the first release to the newest release that he's the only staying member so it, it looks like uh he's, he's mm -hmm. the foundation he's the core he's the he is the mastermind as you say doing a lot of yeah. work jay yeah i so then how did you get involved the them being Toledo Ohio based how how did that all come about man yeah that's actually kind of a funny story because um there's this app called Vamper and it's basically like Tinder for musicians and oh. you know you swipe left or right and you get on, <laughs> that's you, amazing <laughs> you you find other musicians that are similar to like what you're trying to do like if you need a drummer you're swiping on drummers and hold on, you, hold on, I got to set up my Vamper account real quick. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. And like, so he he found me um, and I had I have a solo project. Um, I have a drummer who does stuff with me for that. But it started as a solo project called Beyond All Misery. And that's one of my, you know, bands that I release stuff on and whatever right now. And that band, um, I released my first album. Um, and I was really excited about whatever I put some of those tracks on Vamper. You can link some of your music and stuff. Yeah. And he heard my vocals and was like, was like, holy crap. He messaged me and, and said, um, you know, we're a bit of ways away. You know, you know, you live in Kalamazoo, we're in Toledo, but like, if you want to come hang out for a practice and get to know the band and, you know, see what you can do and hang out and see if the vibe's right. And um, yeah, show us what you can do. So I was like, sure, why not? Like, I wasn't in a band. I I played in a band as a drummer a little bit before that. Um, that didn't work out too well. So I, I you know, took over vocals and yep. So I, I one Sunday came out to a practice um, and they really liked me and it, and it worked out and I memorized the songs beforehand and made sure I got everything down because I wanted to impress them. And it was my first kind of vocal debut into a band. So, and it was, it was already established. They had the logo, they had, they were ready to go. So I, I thought that was really exciting because I didn't have any of that established, um, you know, music and band and whatever. So it was, and the logo being a brain for Cerebral Cortex really was like, Oh, that's so cool. Like, yeah. I really wanted to be a part of it. So, um, yeah, about probably a little over two years ago, I joined and then it took it took um, uh, a while, um, months to um, finish the album up and whatever. And I was doing it virtually from here, sending my vocal tracks to Jeremy. He would put them in the song, mix them up, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, 
we kind of finished the album somewhat virtually, or I would drive two hours there, record a song or two and come back or he would come here. Yeah, it was a roller coaster, but like we met, yeah, on on Vamper and it was it's really cool. So Oh yeah, yeah, that's badass. So is split is that the single that came out on October twenty third, two thousand one is or two thousand twenty one, excuse me. Is that the first single you're on then? Are you on that single split? No, they okay. that was so the, that was the second vocalist that they had gone. Oh, yeah. okay. So your synthetic plague is basically yeah, all the stuff you're like, involved with. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll give you a little so I listened to the album, little a few notes that I had. To me, to be honest, man, just kind of seeing some of your vocal videos and, and kind of knowing what you're into, I expected something different. And to me, that was actually very refreshing. You know, uh, to me, it's like really metal, like if, whatever that means to you. Like it's it's like kind of heavy metal, right? The vocals are sick. Your patterns are super badass on there. And for all the crazy snarling and, and all the vocal acrobatics that you're able to do, I can hear what you're saying. So I'm like, man, that's fucking cool because it's like the way you do the patterns on there almost sticks in my head. It's kind of like a little bit like rhythmic and like rappy almost. Yeah. And I'm just like, that is very cool and refreshing to hear because some people just want to, you know, especially when they're a badass vocalist like you, they just want to do all these backflips over it and, and clutter it all up with every vocal that we could do because we can do all these vocals. But I feel like there is just a lot of space in here. And I love how you approach that on this particular project. You know, you do have repeating parts, so you got something I can grasp onto. That's something we're big on on this show is just being able to, like, write a song, you know? Like, right. a lot of people can do crazy vocals and stuff, but can you write a song and then make those vocals that more in, that much more impactful? You know, so that means a lot. The, the clean vocals, I know that's the guitar player, right? Yep. Yeah, so yep. that adds a nice little breakup when he kind of does some of the cleans, and it's cool that you'll sometimes you'll kind of layer – with him a little bit or sometimes you'll just let him do his thing and then like all the little interludes and the different little you know tricks in between the songs kind of break up the music perfectly so it's not just 45 minutes of distortion or metal in your face right like so yeah. i mean great job with that man fucking really cool job so tell me a little bit about how you approach this compared to you know other th your other project and we'll talk about that too beyond all misery but tell me how you approach this with did he have some ideas that he gave to you or did you say, Hey, here are my ideas. Yeah. So I, obviously it being a different band, I wanted to be different and I wanted to not do all the same stuff. Cause I have, you know, some people who listen to my music that love death core and the heavier side of things. So I do as much of that nasty stuff for them. And then the people who are more, of like maybe old heads coming into death metal and stuff. Like I do more stuff that, you know, I'm, I'm a lot more articulate and I make sure they can hear what I'm saying and stuff like that for cerebral. Um, mostly because we actually perform that music live. So I, I want to make sure I have everything, um, locked down. Um, if I'm performing it live, um, beyond all misery, I kind of, um, tend to do a little bit more like fun um just really crazy stuff to get reactions and stuff like that because um that one i know i'm not going to be doing live so i kind of just have freedom to mess around um if one day you know that happens and we do it live i can totally do that but that's just kind of more the focus for that one but i just yeah i just want to be as different as I can. And I have a lot of different styles that I like to do. So I make sure I incorporate all of those so that people don't get bored because people have, you know, with, with all the social medias and stuff going on, there's, there's a very short attention span in people right now. And they, they like to get their dopamine fixed real quick and then they're on to the next thing. So I like to make sure to switch it up and to be very, um, different in the way I approach things. And cerebral cortex is a very, like a very good way um, of bringing all those styles in because the music itself is very different and very um, like, it keeps you on your toes. Cause it's like, you don't know what's going to happen next. It's very weird. So um, yeah, that's, I just approach it in 
like that's kind of just beyond all misery is just really fun and crazy and this is like more of like my baby like the thing that i like really like make sure i got down but jeremy he um since he wrote the lyrics um there a lot of the patterns were created by him the rhythmic patterns between you know like being on point with the guitar and making sure it flows good and stuff a lot of that had to do with him um and then when he would come over and we would record stuff i there was a lot of things that i had changed too to like um you know because i'm going to be performing them live so i got to make sure that doing all that you know i don't have much time to take a breath here so how about we switch it up and put a gap in there and then you know so there was a little bit of adjusting going on in terms of me being able to perform it live and be comfortable and ready to go. It's still, it's still pretty crazy. The amount of words I have to spit out and stuff. Um, but yeah, there was some adjusting, but Jeremy again was, he's, he's a lot of the idea, man, but, um, that's mostly because the album was written before I joined. So, um, I'm sure there will be a lot of different kinds of music's coming out soon that are going to be very different from the album even so yeah yeah well i i enjoyed the album you know swarm of the earth very cool kind of has some saxophone on there some clean vocals guitar solos like that's all stuff i kind of you know when i hear a newer band with some younger guys in it i don't ever really know what to expect but sometimes i kind of have a notion but hearing this like i said it was really cool and refreshing it was something different something unique and then like the omission you had referred to that song you know there there's some really good guitar shred on there too that you don't hear a lot of that nowadays you know everything's kind of more of the leaning towards the death core mashup death metal type stuff but uh yeah man i i really really like your band uh nick did you have anything i can tell you that when i was listening to it last night chicanery stood out to me as well as museum of hatred Mm -hmm. i think both of those had some some sort of breakdown that made me stop what I was doing and look up, make sure I got the title right. I said, okay, earmark that because that was sick. Um, and I <laughs> guess I was, I was going to ask, um, what are your say? What are some of your favorite songs to perform? Which ones do you feel like you really have the best grasp of? And they just really hit when you're doing them live. I would say the one that, and I can probably speak for pretty much everyone in the band. Um, uh, Museum of Hatred is, okay it's kind of the song that we're all like, oh, we're playing that one. Let's go. That one or Split. Um, okay. Because Museum of Hatred, we recorded a music video for um, mm-hmm. and released a while back. I had blonde hair. It was really different. It was pretty old um, when we shot it. But um, that one is the one that's like since recording the music video, we had to learn that to a T for the video. So like, we're just on point with that song. It's very just easy flowing for us. Um, it's one of the older ones written for the album. So it's kind of just, you know, something that we all uh, grasp very easily. Uh, the split, though, um, split is just the one that's like really crazy and and wild. And we do some cool crowd work stuff at the end and it's it's very like um that one goes pretty crazy and uh, we we are probably going to um re-release that with my vocals on it and do some cool stuff with that so um yeah i would say museum of hatred and split are like our songs that are like we gotta put those in the set you know it's it's the cool set songs for sure yeah do you think you'll take? I'm sorry, Jay. No, go ahead. But uh, real quick, when you you say you're gonna like potentially re-release Split, how drastically different do you think you will make those vocals, or do you think you will try to keep them kind of true to what is already known, or are you gonna just kind of process that with Jeremy in in studio, like see, yeah, real time? There's so obviously you know people dig the song, um, at least. You know, there's there's a handful of people who really love the way that the vocals are and how everything is. Um, I also keep in mind that they they love the new music and they they like us as a band with me being in it and Jeremy and me getting along and all this stuff. And they they see some potential here. So Mm -hmm. I keep in mind that they want to hear 
you know, my rendition of it and see what I want to do with it. So like, I, I definitely will keep, you know, all the lyrics are the same, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the, the vocals are very, I've recorded them. They're, they're very, um, very much my style. I do a little bit of some flipping around some words just in the rhythms and stuff and make, they they land a little bit different in the song and and give a different vibe off so and then um the end there's a little bit of a a, a different ending to the song so that'll be a surprise there's um gets a little heavy heavier it gets um yeah so there's definitely a a, a heavier more like gross vibe to it um the the drums are a little bit different, more upbeat and a little more funkier. And we have a new drummer um, since then as well. So he has written the drums for that song. And it's it's all just a little bit revamped and, you know, more fun. So that's always cool when you can breathe new life into something that, you know, is already good, but you kind of add a couple members and then you get something yeah. that's like, OK, this is the shit now, you know, so mm -hmm. nice to have buy in from new members on yeah. the material, too. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So this is, I got a two part question for you. Tell me a little bit about the practice schedule with these guys and how that looks. And tell me a little bit about your personal practice schedule. Cause I'm assuming the kind of vocals you do, you got to stay up on those things. Yeah. Yeah. So for, as far as practicing with the band, um, obviously they live two and a half hours away. Um, the place that we practice is another added hour onto that. Damn. So like a three hour and 15 minute drive is what I have to do for practices. So I, and they typically do though, like, let's say we have a show at the end of the month. We typically do um, at least one or two practices before the show um, because we've already practiced, you know, an amount of times that we just, we don't need more than one or two before the show. But, um, you know, if we're playing a different set entirely, we tend to do a couple more but um i i don't make so this is where my personal practice comes in is because i don't make every single one of those practices being like so far away and you know things happen and whatever so i i whenever there's a day where i don't make it or there's something going on um i I do a lot of the practicing on my own. I, I go over to, I, I do delivery stuff for my job. So I, you know, I'll be delivering stuff and I'll listen to the whole album all the way through over and over and over again. And I'll practice in the car. Um, I practice at home all the time. So I just, I make sure I keep up on those things. A lot of warming up and stuff, drinking lots of water and stuff helps just the vocals in general. And I, I kind of, make sure I stay familiar with um, the basics because a lot of, a lot of vocalists that are established and already have their thing going on. You know, if you ask them like, what do you do for warming up and stuff? A lot of people will say, I just do it. I just do it. And that's cool. And I can just do it. But if you forget the very, very basics and you don't um, keep that muscle memory, you know, familiar with what, what the very very basics of everything is you're you kind of slip out of it a little bit and when you go so long without playing a show and then you go up there for 45 minutes to an hour and scream your head off if you didn't practice the week before or warm up the day before or anything like that it's it's gonna it's gonna get to you and it's gonna be it's you're gonna feel it and you're it you're going to be like, oh, why didn't I at least scream a little bit beforehand stuff? Your body has to, it's more of a muscle memory thing and your body has to get used to um, all the positions and the posture that you have to have to get those screams out. And if you just go all day without screaming and just rip one out, y you'll feel it for sure. So yeah, yeah, it's a lot of practice. The, the last album that Nick and I did, there was a long period between us recording the vocals and like us being on a constant practice schedule where we recorded or you know practice the vocals all the time and let me tell you that was hell man after not doing it for almost two years actually vocals yeah. and then you go to try to do death metal and you know high screams and all that and it's just like 
that's why I said, I know it's something, especially with the amount of different vocals you do. It's something you got to keep up on all the time, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you got to practice it like any other instrument, you know, and obviously yeah. for you, you probably want to get better as well and try new things because you're that level of vocalist that you have the ability to do that. You're not just trying to get off the basic scream or whatever, you know, you, you're trying new techniques and all that. So, uh, real quick, I, I want to just interject with you because I think it's a good time to do this. So you give vocal lessons. Now, can you tell me what like a false chord is? Like, can you explain that to me? Because this is a term that I've been hearing more often now. And where did this term come from? Like yeah, false so, chord screaming? Yeah, there's, there's essentially two types of vocals aside from singing and, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, and fry screams and false chords they're very different because fry screams will tend to be a, they'll be a lot quieter and a lot more um, throaty and come and a lot of the the sound behind it and stuff comes from your head voice, your soft palate and like your um, in your throat. And then your false chord screams kind of they're a lot louder and a lot more like um just extreme they they you feel it more it's kind of like a core workout while you're doing it it's very like when you get off stage it's like you felt like you did 100 sit-ups like it, it's very like taxing on your body so a lot of um vocalists who sing and scream do both of that they stick to fry screams so bands like wage war um and the a lot of metalcore bands and stuff they they stick to fry screams and stuff because it accompanies singing very well because you could be singing and then just bring the fry in and it kind of just you know it, it it goes hand in hand somewhat false chords if if i were to explain that in the easiest way possible false false chords are like you know like when you're when you're a kid and your mom tells you to go do something you don't want to do it and you give her that like <sighs> that sigh that's like really angry it's essentially taking that and pushing it out. And once you figure out where it sits um, and you push it out, it creates some distortion with it. And the, uh, opera singing and false chord screams have a lot in common. They have a lot to do with each other. So like part of my warm up when I get ready for stuff, I like, run around my house and sing like opera because when you have your it's a very open throat um larynx lowered so you got like talking like real deep like this that that voice is that's the posture you want to have when when you go into screaming because if you do the sigh and you feel it in your throat you're you're bringing that um, you're bringing your voice too high up. You you want to keep an open throat, very uh, big opera, whatever. And then you push the sigh out uh, and it starts really rumbly and kind of like gross like that. And then uh, and you can push it out and get to this point where the distortion comes through and you're not feeling it in your throat. You're not feeling it um, anywhere up here you feel vibration in your chest and you feel like your, your diaphragm being really tense and, and yeah. So it's, it's definitely um, posture is everything. And what I teach um, students is um, a lot of the time. So I tell them that I cannot scream while facing the left. Like when I look left, I can't scream. Don't know why it doesn't, it doesn't come out right. So, and I'm right-handed. And when I look to the right, I scream perfectly. So like a lot of the people that I teach, I say, what, what hand are you dominant in? And I've figured this out recently and it's kind of crazy that it works, but, um, they'll be like, you know, my left hand, my right hand, I tell them to look that direction and scream. And it, it very visually like, instantly gets better and they're like wow that didn't hurt that time or it didn't feel weird that time some people like just looking straight forward um it for some reason i'm starting to figure out the more people i teach that it hurts less and it feels more comfortable 
when they look the direction that they're most dominant in. And it's oh. really freaky. Oh. But it's kind of something that I've figured out the past uh, um, few lessons that I've done is like, it. so far I'm, you know, I'm five and oh on that. <laughs> like, it's like when they look a certain direction that they're dominant in, it's easier for them. So, and that's always been the case for me. So oh. it's kind of a weird fun fact but yeah yeah that's cool man i like that so tell me a little bit about uh i know you said dicky ellen was one of your favorites what what are some who are a couple of the other guys that are you know uh on your radar right now that you that you try to emulate that you yeah to? i think so yeah dicky allen was the main inspiration that got me into it and then phil bozeman of Whitechapel. oh yeah um his like mid low screams are just so like powerful and I know he does false chord. So like that's at least for those lows and he's very like, I don't know the, the power behind those like low screams and stuff is something that I wanted to get because um, like the mids are considered like the, you know, the very basic just screams that people just kind of tend to stay around that range. Um, so I wanted that really basic range to have some power behind it and be something special in and of itself. And Phil Bozeman is, I just thought that was so like listening to his, um, their music was just so cool. Cause like even his mid very basic range screams were like super powerful and unique sounding and he sounded like a monster uh -huh. so like that i love that so like phil bozeman was a lot of inspiration for like the mid low range and then for more of the gutturals and stuff i kind of looked up to um uh i looked up to dicky for those as well um because he does have like a weird tone with his gutturals and stuff and then as well as um cj mccreary from signs of the swarm and David from Signs of the Swarm, the vocalist now, um, they they had the most disgusting, like the lowest, dirtiest, grossest sounds that they make. And um, yeah, so a mix of like, I had my mid-range Phil Bozeman, I had my high acrobatic, you know, Dickie Allen, and then disgusting lows, I had CJ and um, David. And like, it just kind of, I kind of took things from them and kind of made my own, you know, everyone has a, their own tone and stuff. So I made, you know, my own way about it and kind of came up with different techniques and stuff. My, my, one of my favorite ones is, is a guttural where you whistle and scream at the same time. And it just adds like this really weird undertone to a guttural. And like, there's, there's so many ways you can, um, implement weird noises and Dickie Allen was big inspiration for that. So yeah. I have a, I have a question for you. You seem to know a lot about your, your craft singing, um, all, all of these vocal exercises. Are you trained in any way or taking any kind of lessons yourself, uh, clean or otherwise from anybody else? No. So wow. I, I don't, I do I don't sing. I wouldn't say I'm a bad singer, but I wouldn't say I'm a singer. It's just not really my thing. I do right. sing songs when I'm, you know, jamming out and whatever, but I'm singing is not my thing, but I understand where, um, you know, the difference of where singing comes from versus um, screaming and where that's located in your body and all this, like, you know, the all all the anatomy of it and stuff like I am well aware of where everything comes from so I and that's mostly from doing it so much um I kind of know the areas like you know when you're screaming you want to stay away from as as like when you feel it start to get up to here you're doing it wrong you want to keep it low and relaxed and keep your posture relaxed your shoulders down just I know where everything's located so I'm not trained. I haven't taken any classes. I haven't taken any, um, you know, lessons. Um, I've looked up in the very beginning of things, looked up YouTube videos on how to scream. And they always kind of just say, do this. And they don't really explain. They explain how to do it, but they don't say, if it hurts, 
try doing this. So like you always find yourself like in pain trying to figure out what they're doing and you never get the second explanation of um, if it hurts, you know, this is what you're doing wrong potentially. So like I kind of discovered all that part of it on my own. And um, that's what I try to, when I give people lessons, that's what I try to teach them is the, the, if it hurts, you know, you, you might be doing this wrong and this wrong. So like when I'm teaching them, I always check in and say like, is that hurting? They'll be like, ah, oh, maybe a little bit, maybe not. And I just kind of direct them in the, in the right, you know, way then if it hurts, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not trained. I haven't taken any lessons or anything like that. So. Well, you're doing a good job for not having any professional, you know, training. Um, and it's uh, fascinating to me that you've got lessons to give already. And Jason and I take you for a younger cat, like just yeah. by virtue of your, your, you know, your, your influences and your tastes. Um, so congratulations on that, helping the young crop of new vocalists come in. Yeah, for sure. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I think keep it up. So we're waiting for Jay. I don't know if Jay disappeared on your end, but he's gone on my end. Yeah, at I don't, least then. My, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So we at least got you on the, on the mic. That's the important part. Yeah. I don't know what my camera just like completely took a shit on me or something. I don't know what the <laughs> hell is going on here. Uh, yeah. So go ahead with any other question. Give me a second to figure this out. Yeah, sure. So with the, the solo project beyond all misery, correct? Yeah. All right. So you're playing guitar too, then? Um, some of the songs. Yes. The, so in the newest album, one with the really gross pentacle beast thing, sure. um, is the art, um, that one, three of the songs I wrote on guitar and drums, I did everything for three of those songs. Um, um, the Mud being the first one that I wrote entirely by myself. And I had a guitar at the time. That I I was trying to, I, I made a little bit of an oopsie, a little bit of a mistake when I was creating that those songs because I, I wrote a couple songs and said, hey, sh finish them. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, new songs releasing, you know, this date. And I'm like, shoot. Like I told them I have all this music being released, whatever. Rookie mistake. I don't have anything done. So <laughs> I I hurried up. I was really excited about it. So I wanted to give people what they were waiting for. I, I was like, okay, I got to think of something. So I, I'm not much of a guitarist. I can write stuff um, like um like slam kind of brutal slam really simple stuff but catchy i can kind of write that kind of stuff um but as far as the technical sweet picking and the the crazy riffs and i wasn't i wasn't good at that kind of stuff so i wrote three songs and i was and i was like i could write eight more to finish an album i can do that and i tried and tried and i was like i just can't come up with you know many ideas and um because i was so limited in my skills with guitar that i was like you know i i only had three songs to give because i didn't want to play too much of the same thing over and over again Fair. um and so i called my friend at the time and he he was like the best guitarist I've ever seen in person, like ever. I used to drum in a band of his um, a long time ago, like, I don't know, five, six years ago. And I I called him and I was like, dude, can you help me write eight more songs? This album's gonna be really cool. Like, I need your help. And we, we wrote stuff for fun, and, you know, whatever before that. And there's one called The Wretched Scum that's on Beyond All Misery's um, roster. And that one he wrote with me, too. So we've done stuff together. But, like, I was like, I need you to write eight songs. We need to do it by the end of the month. So we had, it was, we were 10 days into that month, and I had those three songs done. And by the end of the other month, I already had set the release date for for the next month, like, right on the second or third day. So we had to finish nine songs in 20 something days. 
Oof. and get them all the and I produced them so I mix and mastered everything and I I had to get all those done in like 20 days and so it was really like he would come over all the time super late nights I work at you know six in the morning factory job at the time so I I was staying up till four in the morning and and doing this music with him getting two hours of sleep going working coming back we'd do it again and we were like grinding 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 for for a month and we did it and we when we finished the last song we were we were super happy we went out and celebrated and and ate some food and stuff and we were like we did it like that's (laughs) crazy and and so yeah that that was pretty crazy but i um so right now um all the new music that's being made for that i have um essentially a ghost writer um from he's from mexico he's writing all of all of the next music and he's where you know talk about little ideas between the songs and stuff but um so i have a handful of songs that um he's um talked with me and written to come out with new music for so currently um i i do not play guitar for that but you know it's a solo project things change and and come and go and um yeah so it's it's that band's a bit of a roller coaster because it's not really you know it's just kind of a thing that when people are like hey you should release new music for this like i'm like i whip something together real quick and it's usually like a month of work whether it's an album or a single it's a month of straight grinding just so someone can have something to listen to and then i take a break like that's pretty much all beyond all misery is but i really love deathcore and i really love um the heavier side of things so once in a while i'm just like uh, even on my own i'm like i want to release a new bam song like that's just like all that's on my mind for like a couple of months sometimes so but yeah yeah I, i've noticed with the that material it is definitely leaning more towards death metal death core it's 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 very heavy stuff i i liked a lot of it very uh vocal heavy but yeah that's that's yeah. your solo project to do like you said to have fun so there's nothing wrong with that so when you're talking about writing these songs was that on that the first album ascension the one that came out in 2022 is that the album you're talking about that you had to grind to get it um, all done no that's the so ascension's the first album i ever released for that band and that one was entirely ghost written by this really cool guy he has youtube channel stuff jacob lizzo it, he he just writes instrumentals of any kind of genre of song ever and i got in contact with him and um we kind of worked together on that album and he would send me songs i'd give him feedback and whatever and we kind of worked on the album together and that one was just to show off my vocals and sort of my vocal debut and i just wanted to do some crazy stuff with vocals and I wanted someone to notice me. So I, that, that whole album was entirely ghost written by someone else. Um, and then the, from the wretched scum and that whole album with the big tentacle monster, that's the one that was written, um, in, in a whole month. So yeah, okay. that's, it, that's the newest self titled one then. Yep. Yeah. The beyond new- all oh, Okay. Cool. Yeah. That the the other singles in between, like the realm of ashes, that stuff was just kind of uh, stuff that you were putting out along the way, or. Yeah. That 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 song was also um, with the same guy that helped me write the other ones. Um, yeah. Um, and then there, yeah, wretched scum we wrote by ourselves. Realm of ashes was was written. It it kind of just you know, like whatever we can do at the time, we just put a song out. Cause right now it's only just me. And then I have a drummer from Canada that will do drum playthroughs and stuff for me and stuff like that. Um, and we kind of just work together and say, Hey, we should release a song soon. Like, who do you want to work on it with? And we'll reach out to different artists and, and kind of work with the community and creating songs. And that's kind of the fun part is like a lot of the songs will be really different because it's entirely written by someone else or, you know, um, but we try, we try to keep it in the same genre and the same realm, but 
a lot of the songs from in that band are just written by so many different people. So that's cool yeah. though, man. It's a great creative outlet. Let you do your thing and keep up mm-hmm. on your vocals, you know. So yeah. I I enjoyed the music. It was very heavy, very in your face. Uh, you know, that's the kind of shit that I dig. So um now you were speaking on notoriety. Tell me a little bit about it seems as of late you've had some of your own personal like covers and videos kind of hit pretty well, at least on your reels and stuff. So tell me a little bit about that journey. What's that been looking like? Obviously, we discovered you through there. But uh, yeah. we've had a few of them go pretty crazy, too. So it's been nice. So I, I get it. But uh, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, that's been really, really cool. It's helped me um, be motivated and helped me push to, you know, like if there's a day where I don't feel like doing anything, all those comments and likes is just like, I'm like, let me do another one. Like it, it gets me out of bed and it gets me doing stuff because like it is really cool to um see that people care and to see that people like what you're putting out and stuff. And I I actually set a goal like months and months ago, um, towards, yeah, it was about five, six months ago. I, I set a goal and was like, I want to get 10,000 followers by the end of the year. And that was like my, my thing. And, um, at the rate I'm going now, I'll, I'll pass that. And it's really cool to, to, to be at that point where like enough people care about what I'm doing. Um, it gets me excited to keep pushing on and stuff. And like, there's, you know, there's a lot of hate that, you oh, know, yeah. you'll, you we hate <laughs> comments and stuff like that. Um, and that's to me, that's a good thing because, you know, like if all you get is positivity, then all, all who's seeing your video is just people who like your stuff. Like, you're staying in that kind of really thin genre. And um, that's cool to get all love and support, but that means only a thousand people or, you know, what I'm just throwing a random number out there, but only a couple people are seeing what you're putting out. Um, if you're getting all the hate and everything that's being thrown your way, that's because your your content is being pushed out to to so many people that you're going to get some people that don't want nothing to do with you. So there's, there's one video that's well over a half a million right now on my Instagram. And it's like the comments are wild. And like, it's a lot of it is a little bit discouraging, like the hate and stuff, but you just got to keep remembering that, you know, that not everyone's going to like what you're doing, but, um, because Instagram is for whatever reason, reason the algorithm's pushing that out. Like, you know, you got something going for you, like at the end of the day, like, so it's, it's really cool to see. I I'm already a lot further along than I ever thought I would be. Um, Cause I don't really come from a place that's, you know, has a lot of hope. So I, I kind of um, was like, ah, eh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice if I made it, that'd be nice. But like I'm starting to now realize that it's totally possible and I could get there if I work hard and um, I'm I'm trying. So, well, my my brother in metal, (laughs) you know, those reels reached me and I thought this guy is got to be huge. Like I I just thought you were like somebody huge that I just wasn't aware of because the vocals were just so incredible. I was like, this guy's got to be in like a big band already. And to find out that you guys are really just kind of like somewhat out of the the starting block yeah you're you're still on the do it yourself level i I was kind of surprised to know that you weren't famous and i just happened to not (laughs) know you to find out that you're just like a young guy with these super incredible vocals you know i think you put a little feather in your hat knowing that you're doing the right thing and jason and i were just having this conversation where you know if if you're just staying in that small circle of like likes only and and good positive comments only then you're probably only appealing to your friends or, right, exactly. Or yeah. your guests' friends. It's like, hey, good job, way to go, thumbs up. But it's when you get that hater that's just incessant yeah. and just constantly like berating you. And we were just saying, like, you know, if they had shit going for themselves, they wouldn't even bother. Yeah. They wouldn't even take the energy to to like discourage you from doing what you're doing. So if you if you generate a hater or two, you're doing the right thing, I think. For sure. <laughs> um, yeah. It's it's hard to read that shit when you're having a bad day. 
Yeah. Like, like you can get really down on yourself. You can get that imposter syndrome. You can feel like mm -hmm. what is maybe they're, maybe they're right. You know, and like, don't, don't even yeah. feed that because you know, like you're, you're putting a lot of your own personal time and energy into something creative and it's, it's reaching other people. You reached us. Now we're putting you on the pod. We're going to try and push you out to some new people and hopefully grow you personally, your fan base and your bands, both your, your creative bands, uh, fan bases and hopefully we'll pull in some of your fans you know to watch you speak to your your projects and your in your craft yeah. here on our pod so we get it man like we I somebody went after Jay sideways and I was not having a good day myself and I got into it I was like here I go and I just thought yeah. and I thought man and I've seen how you reply to and you have a really positive charismatic way of like like dismissing that you're like hey man it's all love around here and I just I loved it because I thought man I would not have the patience that this guy has right now like it's i was tough. i was yeah. i was really impressed because i wanted to come at him sideways for you and i was like who the hell are you kid you know like <laughs> who are you guy like how dare you this guy's doing good yeah. work so we, yeah, we get it it's tough to like deal with the comments but i found out that if you react to them positively a lot of the time because you know you can't understand tones and the way that people are actually like you know, when they're typing, you can't understand if they're angry or sad or whatever, whatever's going on. So like a lot of the time you were, you respond positively to it. Some of the time they're joking. They're literally just joking. And like, if you respond positively, I've done that to some people and they're just like, ah, I'm surprised you can take it. Like, I'm glad you can take a joke. Like, right. and then they'll follow me. So like, yeah, nice. a lot of those hate comments end up following me because of the way I react to them. So like, it's, it's it's hard to especially like you said on a bad day but like a lot of the time people are don't really mean much by it so it's it is hard to tell though yeah yeah i i got two things on that one i'll reiterate this that winners don't leave negative comments it's also helped me directed me because i've been that guy sometimes just throw a co negative comment on something i don't like i'm like why am i even wasting my time doing that so like because yeah. i have better shit to do right like i'm busy like so if I got time to leave a negative comment, I need to realize what I'm doing with my time and I should be doing something productive to better myself or my projects, right? And then two, it's yeah. like, it's the internet. What do you expect? There's fucking animals on the internet. Like, yeah. you know, oh, they're yeah. just monkeys Crazy. with cell phones. Like, what is... We're just a few yeah. steps ahead of throwing shit at each other. So it's like, that yeah. means, that's what we're doing now. Just verbally throwing shit at each other. <laughs> yeah. So you real. can't really get too salty because it's fucking username nine, nine, five, nine, just talking shit. You know what I mean? Sally one, yeah. two, three, and they're not doing anything with their lives, but leaving old, this kid, he's screaming into a mic. So I'm going to leave some negative comment. And it's like, you're not even a part of this world. So why do you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they don't understand. You just got to let it roll off too, bro. Like for I, sure. I also find that just thanking him for taking the time to listen like yeah. it or not. Like, Hey man, yeah, pre appreciate yeah. the feedback. Like, you know, like, thanks for, thanks for, engaging with me it all drives up the attention anyway the more comments good or bad it just helps drive for traffic real? so just take helps it for what it is out. yeah yeah it's it's the age we live in you have to you have to be able to have thick skin if you want to do music art put your face out there do social media content or you know any kind of um content creation you really have to just take the the bad with the good for sure yeah so i think you're doing a good job of that on that front too yeah for sure man uh Tell me a little bit about your writing process, man. Cause you have a, you know, a few different projects. So how, do, what, what dictates your writing and like, what do you normally write about? Uh, as far as like lyrics, you mean? Yeah. Just like how you decide to put patterns together in a certain project or, you know, lyric wise, where, where does that inspiration come from? And yeah. Um, so I really, I grew up watching like Lord of the Rings and stuff. I'm a real fantasy. I love strategy games and like fantasy stuff. So I, a lot of, um, especially Beyond All Miseries, lyrics are are a fantasy um, vibe, a fantasy background and stuff. And I'll, I'll put the fantasy into a situation that's happened in my life or, or um, you know, just something that's going on in the world or whatever it is. And I'll, I'll kind of create like a horror depiction or like a fantasy 
story based off of a story that's happening in my life. So like it'll I'll I'll be talking about um ghosts like scary creatures or whatever or animals but those those scary creatures are maybe pollution or or some sort of thing that's coming so like i i kind of um create a a story out of the love that i had as a kid being fantasy stuff um and if something happens in my life uh, like i'm i'm vegan so i i the whole first album ascension was um uh i talked a lot about animals coming back and and taking back their land and like fighting the humans and killing them and, and like messing up their world and stuff like that and a lot of people that didn't know i was vegan just thought it was some metaphor for something and like you know whatever but that whole that whole album is about veganism and how i feel towards um um how animals are treated and stuff like that so like that i i do a lot of that kind of stuff um the song that i just wrote that's coming out um uh on the 10th sorry um that one is a lot more straightforward um um something about my life so uh i just kind of implement what i liked as a child and and throw it into um make it a lot uh, like very poetic and throw it into something that's happened in my life or a friend's life or something like that and kind of go from there but that's as far as like lyric writing uh goes um what was the other question? It was like, like that patterns. Girl. What like when you put your oh. patterns on? What what dictates that? Like yeah, okay. So that is fun because um I like to because a lot of bands are just very I I guess the being monotone with everything and just kind of like I have a sentence that I'm saying and I'm just I'm just going for it and it's kind of a straight line. Um, I like to um, put my vocals to the kick drum and like the downbeats of like what's going on and stuff like that. And like, kind of like um, dancing around the music a little bit, because um, if something flows with the music, it's first of all, overall going to make the sound, the song just sound so much better because it's going to be, it's going to, everything's going to be flowing together and be um, just kind of in sync. And then, also, it just kind of um, creates something just different because in different genres of music like pop and rap and stuff, they have a beat, they have a rhythm and they kind of they write down the lyrics and they say what they have to say. Um, I think with with all that's going on in metal, the different riffs that are going on, the drums are going crazy. There's so many different ways to to jump around your vocals and throw in different um patterns and stuff like that and just play with it a little bit and it just i just try to keep listeners being like whoa like i didn't expect them to like go fast there and then slow it down and you know like and bringing in words that have like three four syllables and just like dragging them out longer or saying them fat like there, there's so many different ways to react to the crazy music that's going on. So, um, yeah, I just like to keep it very rhythmic and less straightforward and straight on in a line. Just like to dance around a little bit yeah. for sure. Did you go ahead. No, go ahead. No. Okay. I was going to say we had Adam Cody from glass casket. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's also was in a band wretched and he's played in a lot of different bands, but something that he said, he's like, the vocal, especially with this kind of music, is almost a percussive instrument at times, you know, or mostly. So if you think about it, you're kind of adding that percussive layer on top. So that makes sense on how you're doing it. Sometimes you'll go with a kick drum. Sometimes you'll go with a snare. But uh, you, yeah. uh, it's cool that you like to play with it and explore that instead of just kind of doing the same thing all the time. That shows that you're very serious about your craft, you know. Mm -hmm. So... uh we got a few more questions for you. Like I said, man, we keep these zoom ones to about an hour and a half. So we got about 25 minutes and then we'll let you go. You go to that. A couple more questions. Yeah, that's or, good. Or, or yeah. Cool. Uh, we don't like to keep people all day or nothing, you know, so I know you got shit to do, but uh, 
Tell me a little bit about your, I know it says you, you're a producer, you know, a production. Tell me, just give me a little insight on that, will you? Like what's your setup, you know, uh, how do you kind of learn how to mix and master? Cause you said you mix and mastered the, some of the BAM stuff or whatever. So. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to get into that because I found myself being really, um, reliant on other people and, when you don't know other people and you, you know, everyone's got stuff going on in their life. Um, you, I got kind of tired of relying on other people and tired of, um, asking, Hey, like how much would this be? And like, what do I need to do? And like waiting the wait times to get it back and all this stuff is, is, you know, I, I just was like, I just want to figure out how to do it myself. Like, so I can like be on my own schedule and like, just if I want to release a song, I can just write a song and do it. Like I, I just wanted to have that ability. So like, um, I was, I don't know, 16. Um, when I started to get into just writing music, not really so much vocals. Um, cause I've only been doing vocals for about four years. So I, when I was that young, I was just a drummer and I wanted to write music. Um, my brother played guitar, so we would record stuff together. So I wanted to learn how to do it. So it took a whole summer job saving up money to buy a computer. And um, I I didn't spend money on anything the whole summer. I just was like, computer, computer, computer. I had that in the back of my mind. Um, of course, I wanted to play some video games and do things as a teenager. But like I, I that whole goal was like, I want to have something that I can record music on. So um took me a summer, bought that, got into it, whatever. I looked up some videos and stuff, how to get familiar with the software that I was recording on. But as far as like, um, like mixing the music and learning what plugins to use and all these things, all the technical side of things. Um, I, I, I've looked up some videos, but I mostly figured that all out on my own. I didn't take a lesson for it or anything. I wanted to do school for it for a minute. So I started to like get familiar with how lessons would go and stuff. And it just, I was never a fan of school. So like, I, I just, it felt like work to me and it took all the fun out of it. It sucked all the joy out of it. So I just, I was like, I just am gonna like, you know, make mistakes and figure it out. So I just would be up all night long, just like mixing, like just a, 10 second little increment of a song just just trying to get that perfect and then move on to the next one and like i i really wanted to just be able to do it myself so i've been like recording and mixing music for probably about twice as long as doing that it's it's been like i uh, probably about five six years since i started like trying to at least record music um and uh, I've just been getting more of a hang hang of it the last like year, year or two. So, um, and then I wanted to start producing for other people found out that was a lot of work because yep. <laughs> now, you know, just, just like how, when I was younger and relying on other people, have, it's almost more stressful to like have people relying on you and you know, you have a deadline and you have to get stuff done and like, with work and life and things that go on, it's just, I was like, Oh my God, this is a lot. So I kind of took a break from doing that. And I have little um, projects and stuff, but I mostly work on my own music when it comes to producing and stuff. Cause um, it's very stressful for me, especially right now, like to just have all these people relying on me and me mixing their music for them and stuff. Uh, but it's definitely something that I'll I'll pick up on, you know, like off and on. But like, yeah, it, it took me a while to figure out recording. It was very difficult. Mixing is like you you, you don't want to leave and get to a stopping point until you like how it sounds. But you have to eat. You have to go to the bathroom. You oh. have to go to work. <laughs> you have to do all these things throughout the day. And and all you want to do is just sit there until it sounds good. And it. it eats away at you and it like it i would get so angry and frustrated and like i delete everything because i'm like it sounds like shit <laughs> i just want to delete everything and and then the next day 
I'll be like, oh, I want to go back to it. I go home, get on the computer. It's deleted. And I'm like, God damn it, why did I delete it? Like, so you always come back to it. You always want to come back to what you were working on. But um, it's good to take breaks because oh, yeah. you you get so angry. And, and sometimes but. being a producer myself, uh, you know, you, you'll sit there and add all this shit and think it's helping, but sometimes you're just fucking it up even more, you know, cause sometimes but, less is and, more. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, less is more. We, we preach that a lot around here, you know, especially with the learning production yourself, because you can watch these videos and these guys, it's like, how much do I want to spend on this next plugin? Oh, if I had this plugin, it might sound better. Or if I buy this thing, you think it's always this chase where it's like, you really just need the basics and a good ear and a good ear comes by doing a, a lot, just like playing music or singing or, you know, doing anything like that. It just takes time. And like you said, I love the way you said it. You got to make the mistakes, man. Yeah, you know? for sure. And you're just going to get better at it. So. so but that's yeah. cool. Oh, I, hold up. Nick, yeah, sorry. Yeah. But that is cool that at least you can do it for yourself because you're already ahead of a lot of other people. And then that, especially being a vocalist, you can get on the mic, do whatever you want. That's why I wanted to do it. Yeah. 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 So assuming that your place, I've seen your covers, you do them there at your place. So you're allowed to scream as loud as you want when you want. Yeah. I just got a little studio, you know, Okay, cool. something little, but I, um, yeah, I do everything in here. I turned my closet into a, um, a vocal booth. I got, you know, big blanket over it and you know it's a little wonky but uh it works and i yeah. come out with music and people like it so you know yeah as long as people don't care that you're screaming in that room that's all that matters yeah no <laughs> yeah. yeah that's cool as hell diana i love how like self-motivated you are and just do it yourself like through and through and how much you've learned just on your own i think that's a real testament to people coming up that you know like there's guidance out there but there's it, more going to be generated in terms of outcome by just saying like, all right, I'm doing this. Like I'm, I'm doing this for myself here and now today. I'm not going to wait for it to happen for me. I'm not going to wait for somebody to show it to me how to do it. I'm just going to do it. Like when we first sat down to do this podcast, we just met up. We didn't even know we we're going to do it. He's like, you want to just hit record? I was like, well, we're here. We might, you know, like, let's do it. Let's do episode one today instead of just hammer it out and talk about it. He's like, it's never going to happen unless we just hit record. And I was like, let's go, let's roll. So that's good. You got a really charismatic attitude. I think you're just going to win people over the more and more you like put content out there. Um, You know, you see, you're like, you know, you're a seemingly sensitive person. I like that about you. I think that that's a good thing and the world needs more of it. So don't let the haters get you down and, and definitely keep grinding, like keep kicking out the content, keep, keep up the good work on, on BAM and also Cerebral Cortex. I'm, I'm yeah. stoked to see if I can get out to you guys. You're on the opposite side of the, the state as me. I mean, you're in, you're in Toledo or in West Michigan, but if you guys make your way up to like Grand Rapids, I think there's a bit of a scene and you know, and you're from Kalamazoo. Oh so yeah. Yeah. Like there's, there's some, there's some good things happening out of Kalamazoo, I think in my opinion. So try to convince the guys to come out our way so I can catch a show and <laughs> shake hands with you. For sure. For sure. Yeah. It'll happen. So, um, couple more questions for you, man. Tell me a little bit about, do you plan on going on tour with Cere- Cerebral Cortex? Is that something that's in the cards? Is that like something that you see yourself doing, touring? Yeah, we're, we're working on it right now. You know, reliable transportation is tough. Yeah. Um, uh, cause you know, you, you see bands like buses breaking down all the time and oh. it's, it's really discouraging cause, um, people are just like, let's just, you know, write songs and release songs and be popular on the internet. And, and that's great because, you know, you want to build the following and stuff, but you also want to enjoy some of that, that life, the, the touring life. So like, um, it's, it's tough, but we, that is our, a goal of ours, um, for, for next year, maybe by the end of this year, like it is a goal for us and it's definitely something that we all really, really, really want to do. So for sure. Yeah. We're just working on all the details and everything but yeah for sure yeah I, I know all about that my band i played a band called iron sharpens iron and we were supposed to play at the music factory last week last weekend with gore pig but their van broke down in nashville so they didn't make the show so the whole show got canceled so i yeah. know about that touring life that's a little bit beyond me i'm i just play metal 
to get on stage to play metal anymore at my age, you know, but, uh, the touring yeah. boat missed me. We should have did that, you know, 20, 20 years, years ago, ago, but where you're sitting is a perfect age to be doing that, getting out there and experiencing the road. So, um, I seen that you guys just recently, uh, I believe it was recently. Did you play Toledo death fest? Yeah, that was a fun one. That, oh. that was really, yeah, we played that. And, um, the band itself, this, that was my first time, but the band's played there a few times. Um, uh, before I was in the band and that's I've heard that's always a blast it was really fun when I went and hopefully we'll be back next year that'll be cool oh yeah. yeah yeah I've seen your band has been on some higher profile shows so that's cool you definitely got that going for you I see once in a while you'll jump on stage with Implicator too huh yeah yeah they they're a uh, Michigan they're from Kalamazoo and they they play a lot of shows. So whenever they're around, like I, I did a feature. Well, I asked them like, Hey, let's, let's just like jump up, you know, and like do something together one show just for fun. And he was like, yeah, sure. And then we did it more and more and more. And I would come up for one song every time. And it was always the same song um, towards the end. And then one time we were just like, should we just like actually like, have me be a feature on that song and they're like yeah we'll finish the song you'll be a legit feature and then whenever you're around when we play that song come up for your official part so um the other show that they had a while back um a couple months ago was the first time they played that song since they got the since i was the actual official um feature in that track and i jumped up for my part and it was a lot of fun i like to jump up for a lot of bands and like just connect with people and um uh i've done some i've jumped up for casket robbery megan's awesome she's dude, a homie and dude, we, we just a lot listened, of we just listened to them for like the first time not a half an hour ago and yeah we're both like fucking head over heels in love with that band we do reaction yeah, episodes and they sent us a track and we were both like holy shit that's badass man <laughs> that was yeah they're they're awesome i love all all the people in that band and megan megan the vocalist is really nice and an awesome person they're all really cool so i've we've hung out with them plenty of times played with them um a few times and they're they're cool a any band that's in the local metal scene toledo or you know like the midwest um they're all just really friendly, really nice. And uh, at least like the boys from ignominious too, if you've heard of them, no, they're the band that plays with, you know, Cassia robbery and uh, the convalescence there. I love all those guys. Like it's, it's a good time for sure. Everyone's super, super nice. The community's awesome. Oh yeah. I think that tracks because a lot of people know it's a niche market. There's not a lot of money to be made here unless you have some kind of wild breakthrough, some viral breakthrough, but we're all just doing it for the love. Right. And so when you surround yourself yeah. with people that are doing something that they love, you know, hopefully you can expect to be surrounded by, you know, some infectiously positive and happy people doing art for the fun. Yeah, so. for sure. All right, brother. I got uh, just a couple more questions for you and then we'll let you enjoy your Sunday. Like I said, thank you for your time and coming on the show. Uh, What's your favorite part of being a vocalist, man? Oh, probably just like aside from all the music and, and everything, one of my favorite things about it is just the ability, just simply the ability to scream because like <laughs> it's really fun, like being able to just you know friends or or people walking down the street to be able to just like have the ability to make such a terrifying noise because like <laughs> at times it's just so funny to like people will come up and be you know do that scream or whatever and it's just really fun to like see people's reactions and stuff like that and like a lot of people are scared a lot of people think it's really cool um, I, I always thought it would be really fun to volunteer in a haunted house and just scare the shit out of people <laughs> um, and like just stuff like that. Just just the ability to to make those noises is my favorite part, because it's just like, I don't know, it, it aside from all the music, it's just so fun to just whip a scream out, you know, whenever. Um, so, yeah, that's probably it. 
So that, in, that inspires this question on my part here. Do you have a name for all of these different vocal styles that you have? Do you like name, like here's the gremlin, here's the goblin, here's the banshee, here's the, like we, we have a few that Jason and I, you know, kick around back and forth, but I'm wondering, do you, do you label them with something so that you can at least communicate with your band members? Like how, what if I do this style here? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. So <laughs> there's, there's one I call, um, the whip scream like whipped cream because <laughs> it it sounds like someone you know like when a kid just like just chugs back a whipped cream can like it sounds like that like like that noise um i just like curl my tongue sideways i like got and then uh -huh. close my mouth and it kind of like bulls the noise like, oh, like this and like when you do a high scream with that it just sounds it sounds like a really angry whipped cream can. And it, I call it, the whipped cream. it's like the perfect name for it. It's, it's really funny. And um, so I have that one. And then everybody knows about like the tunnel throat high scream. It's like the tongue down at the bottom of the teeth. Like people have like those names for everything. Um, I, I call one witch highs, like a witch. Cause I, I think of while you're doing them, just like a creepy decrepit witch in a cave like talking to herself like that's what i like imagine when i do those vocals so like and that's more of like the goblin-y um not so much a scream but it's more of like talking so mm -hmm. in in the parts of songs where it's like i have like a message or i'm telling a story or something like that i tend to do those because okay. um yeah so like witch screams whip whip screams and um just i have some names but there is the generic like tunnel throat highs and you know like stuff like that um that everybody just knows but yeah there's a few i have names for yeah that's fun nice so uh, a couple more questions for you here man uh got any hobbies outside of music i know you're a busy man with work life job you know that that always happens but i know you said you're kind of a little bit into fantasy or a lot of into fantasy you got any hobbies just shit you that's not just music related. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm a gamer. I kind of always been like a gamer. So I, I, I play a lot of, um, a lot of like shooting games and stuff like that, but mostly like strategy. I love strategy games and especially when fantasy comes in it, it's like, sometimes I can find myself being a little too engulfed in another dimension. Uh, but, um, so yeah, I'm a bit of a gamer. Um, what's your platform? Uh, I, I play on PC. So like any, any game that's, um, I like to play like the huge games that take like, you know, your PC might blow up like those kind of <laughs> strategies. Um, and it's, yeah, so I'm a bit of a gamer. I, um, I, I really liked like longboarding as a kid. So like, it's kind of morphed into like, sometimes I'll go out and like skate and stuff like that. And like, um, uh, I like just going to shows just for, for fun, um, sometimes and just talking to the community and whatever. Um, but yeah, really my main hobby is just, um, uh, pretty much gaming and, I'm a bit of a reality TV nerd, so uh, I watch a lot of reality TV. So, yeah. So I, I got a game for you. Have you heard of Darkest Dungeon? I've heard of it. I haven't played it. So it's it seems like it would be up your alley a bit. It's got that strategy vibe. you got to strategize every week which party of four you're going to bring out. And you've okay. got a, You've got a whole cast and crew of like 12 different like classes that you can choose from, but you can only bring four out at a time. So you're constantly uh, going out and you have to strategize. You have to synergize each one. Like you got to have your healer. You got to have your tank. Yeah. You got to have your, you know, your, your DPS. Well, it's not really DPS cause it's turn based, but I think okay. you'd like it. Look into it. And it also fits with the, you know, like the fantasy vibe that you're talking about. So yeah, sure. um, really, really cool artwork. Just when, when you land a crit or something or when, when you when you kill somebody they'll like zoom in like the art will be a little bit more yeah. graphic yeah. so it's simple but it's hard because it, it can get under your skin a little bit it's one of those games it's a dungeon crawler so when it, yeah. when a 
part of your when one of your party members dies, that's it, gone. And you just go to the you go to the tavern and you recruit a new level zero and you build them up and it it's a major setback. You know, you're like, fuck, I gotta build a new tank. It's gonna take me eight weeks <laughs> to get this guy. Yeah, look into that one. It's a lot of fun. Okay, for sure. Yeah, Simple. I love it. It's, you know, it's on Steam. It's probably like twenty or thirty bucks. They've got Darkest Dungeon too, which it, they changed. They changed the whole game, like so. They gave it like a new graphic engine. It's now three D instead of just like left to right. So they gave okay. the fans like something different. They didn't just like reskin the first game. But I'm yeah. I'm a huge proponent of the first game, especially for all that you mentioned. Like that, I haven't played it in a while, but um, for sure. Yeah, I think you dig it. Now we know cool. what Nick's going to do to this afternoon when he gets home. I, dude, if I get into that <laughs> game, I guess a he month goodbye. A month. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just play Minecraft with my kid now. That's, yeah. that's Minecraft's fun. good. Minecraft's yeah. fun. We love it. All right, brother. <laughs> uh, so what's next for you, Zion? Um, right now, just um, obviously, you know, I have the goal of just gaining a following and um, – um, meeting all the right people, uh, networking and stuff. Uh, the goal is to just, um, build up me, um, a as a person. Cause, um, it's, it's good to put a lot of your time in your band and your, um, um, the band that you're in and where you want to go with that. Um, but I think just as, as a person, as an individual, it's really smart to build yourself up. Um, because, you know, if, if, people learn if people uh start to like you as a person they're gonna check out your band so like it's not always too important to like spend every bit of your time and effort on your band um when you know if someone doesn't like you or someone doesn't know you they're not gonna that's why your friends check out your band and not people you don't know so like it, if the more people um learn to like you that's why i do live and i just talk to people and hang out like I want people to like me as a person and to get to know me so that, um, you know, they want to check out my stuff and stuff like that. So just, just building up myself, building up my name, um, getting better at, you know, my craft, uh, learning new things, um, just being active on social media and showing people that this is what I want to do and, um, that I'm passionate about it and stuff. Um, and just, Come out with some good music, pretty much. Oh, yeah, I like that answer, man. That was wise beyond your years, my friend. Yeah, I that, think that was very good. You're definitely already doing those things very well. I'd say just keep a consistent attitude about it, and you'll be on your way because you've got immense talent, especially for only singing for, like, four years, four or five years. Like, it's, I was floored. I was like, Jesus, this guy's up <laughs> there. Like, I mean, honestly, I mean, I mean, you can walk away with this with a little, you know, something a little feather in your hat because you had names like Travis Ryan and Will Ramos and Ben Dior of uh, shadow of intent. Like some of those names are immediately what I was thinking. I was like, man, this guy's, he's got it. So between your band, which has got great musicianship, especially with Jeremy uh, creating so much music for y'all. Like, I think you've got something there and your vocals too. So you, you guys, I think you have like the it factor as Jason and I like to say. So just keep, keep up the good work on that. Did they know you were doing this podcast today and representing or you um, just like I, you just like I, I'm Zion. I do what I want. <laughs> I I did mention it. Yeah. Um. You know, life's crazy. They they might have forgot, but I I did mention it, and um. I think it would it would be really cool. Like I, I'll, you know, they're gonna watch it and they're gonna like you know check in for a second because they they love we we've had some people do um, just like uh a question and answer sort of thing like interview like on um like a website and stuff like sure. we've had a couple of those things because our weirdness kind of draws people in sometimes and they have a lot of questions um so yeah they i definitely have mentioned it so they'll check it out yeah, we'll, we'll send you all the links and the reels and the, and the clips to share cool so we got one final question man before we let you go it's uh nick's final question and he always asks this to everybody before we go just get a little taste of uh your personal taste. Yeah. So um, for the, anybody who's not watched the show, any of our guests first time on, I like to ask them what they're listening to currently 
so that they can refer it to their fans and friends. So give me one heavy hitter, like one, you know, any metal band or heavy other heavy music that you'd like to recommend to people. And also give us something that you like to chill out to something that you like decompress and, and it can be any style. It doesn't have to be metal at all. Just something heavy and something chill for all the listeners here. Okay. So heavy and like what I'm listening to right now, um, it's more of like on the hardcore vibe. Uh, there's a band called Boundaries. A lot of you guys probably I, already know. I've just uh, caught wind of them, but yeah. Love, love them. And there, there's one album that I just listen to on repeat all the time. And um, Boundaries is great. Um, so that's the one that I, I listen to pretty much every day. I listen to um, nice. a lot of their music. So, um, nice. and then... I like podcasts and stuff, so I chill out on those. But music wise, um, I like just really chill, like R and B. Okay. So like when I'm driving around and stuff, I like to relax to like just, you know, like I really like Akon and a lot yeah. of like R and B music. Uh, and um, yeah, so I kind of like to to chillax on some like soft, chill R and B music for so. sure. I'm a folk man myself. I like to chill out to that, but I love Akon. I love his voice. He's he's great. Yeah, catchy. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for your time today. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, how can people reach you since you're building your personal brand? How can they get a hold of you? Uh, the, the links will be below, but just tell us, you know, if we want to get some vocal lessons from you or if we want to follow you, how, how do we get a hold of you? Yeah, so I'm most active on Instagram. It's just my name, Zion Bittenbender. Um, uh, that um, DM me on there. That's where I like answer a lot of people's questions if they want feature lessons. Um, just questions in general. Um, my DMs are pretty open. Um, on Instagram, and then um, I have a link tree in my bio. Um, on Instagram that has all of you know the Spotify's. Um the schedule for lessons, um, a lot of all my stuff, you know? So, um, my Instagram is where I would, where I would go to, um, if, if you have any questions or want to see anything that I'm working on and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that, that's probably about, about it. Um, my Instagram holds everything. So okay. cool. That, yeah. that like will be, be, below the video and the audio of this so you guys can just click that in the description is there anything else you want to say or go over before we call it dude well i i just want to say yeah thanks for uh you know the interest and in wanting to like talk to me and um learn about you know my life and stuff like that and um thanks for uh um letting me come on and talk it was fun so oh, yeah dude. and it's good to talk to more people that i mean you guys are from michigan so it's cool to like um interact with you know more more people that are from here and understand uh the the community and stuff so yeah for sure thanks for letting me uh come on and talk oh yeah man thanks for coming on hopefully we can meet in person one day soon and uh hang out and chat a little more but you got yeah. more stuff going on or the band or anybody else you want to refer we're, we're, we're open arms too. So you're more than welcome to come back on any time. If you got some more stuff to promote or more conversation you want to have, man, we always, you know, if we connect with somebody, we always leave that door open because that's what we're here to do is, you know, build this community as you kind of put it, you know? So with that being said, man, thanks so much for your time, bro. I hope you have a good day and uh, peace out to you. Keep doing your thing, man. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you. Guys. Yeah. Take All right. It easy, bro. Good time. Later. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the episode. Be sure to hit that like button and give us a share. Yeah, and if you enjoyed our podcast today, please give it a rating on your streaming service to help us gain some exposure. And if you really enjoyed the show, please give us a follow or hit that subscribe button and come hang out with us every week. And remember, keep it metal.